I started as a student here, and my parents decided that I was going to go to an all-girls Catholic school. I didn't want to. I wanted to go to Barringer, but they decided that I was going to St. Vincent's. And right after college, I was offered a position here, and I took the job, and here I am. So this is my 42nd year teaching. I came to St. Vincent's in September of 1969 as an English teacher. I remained as an English teacher from 1969 to 1976. Returned in 1978 as the program director, and at that time I became the administrative director. Our kids are the exact same kids who go into any other public school or private school. They are the typical teenager from the same neighborhoods, from the same sending schools that go into all of the other schools. They are unique. They are they are who they are. Um, they come with all of their. Uh, talents, with their goodness, they come with their shortcomings, as do all of us, their teachers and their administrators. There is an opportunity here for people to really develop who they are, and that is more the emphasis. Last year's graduating class, our most recent, earned $3.4 million in scholarships, and there were 70 plus students graduating. And it's not magical. Nothing happens here by magic. It's hard work. Schools are being asked to do things that schools were never intended to do. And I think that, especially in public schools in the city and in cities like Newark, the social problems that students come into the school with make it so, so difficult for anybody. They come with, with experiences and situations and problems that I don't know that I would have ever survived had I had to have lived through them when I was that age. The fact that schools are being expected to perform at a level that families are not expected to perform at, social services are not expected to perform at, government is not expected to perform at, I think is essentially unfair. We have kids who have been homeless. They've come from houses where there's no heat, there's no electricity, there's no hot water. I'm not going to be quick to um, criticize the public school system because I, I feel that they're dealing with in, enormous problems and don't know myself if we had the same numbers of students, um, if we would be able to be as affected as we are. Two or three times a week, a student has the opportunity to write in a journal and then we have to respond back in writing. So. That gives a kid an opportunity who might be shy or who might be reluctant to sit across and tell you a problem that she might be experiencing. It gives her an opportunity to vent it. She gets a response, but it's in writing. I think students, young people, need to be known. They need to be feel that people care about them. They need to feel supported. And I think that that, more than anything, is what makes it possible for us to deal with some of the same sociological problems with having a greater deal of success across the board. I think that the recent um, promise of $100 million uh, to the Newark Public School System and the charter schools um, can be a very exciting uh, prospect. I'm happy when our city and our kids get any kind of positive attention. You know, some people see Newark as the Wild West. Don't go there, don't teach there, don't live there, don't drive through there. I'd love the perception of Newark to change because I think the perception of Newark is extremely unfair. Too many young people can't wait to get away from the city, get out of the city, get away from here. I want, it, I want better but I, I don't know that money is the answer to the problem. We have a problem called poverty in our city. We have a problem called broken homes. We have a problem called drug addiction, alcoholism, abuse in families. Unless uh, there is a tremendous amount of creative thinking around the use of that money and that there is a very definite, clear, rigorous accountability and system of accountability, I'm not sure it's going to have any impact at all. Then I think we look at what we can do, how the schools can work along with community groups. It's bigger than $100 million. 
It's bigger than that. Our teachers here have made a heroic sacrifice. These people who have been with us 20 plus years, 15 plus years, um, have very little to look forward to in terms of financial stability once they leave, once they retire. We don't make a lot of money, but I wouldn't work anywhere else. I love the fact that we have young teachers who are staying. I heard teachers just a few weeks ago, but they're saying, you know, I know I don't want to go anywhere else. I don't want to go into the public school because I feel as if what I'm doing here matters. The people I work with don't see this as a job. The reality is that as charter schools uh, develop, then obviously because they're free of charge, they're free schools, you're going to see people taking their, their kids out of private schools. What they're forgetting, though, is that there's a whole dimension of education that their children will not get in a charter school. I would love to see this money used to great advantage, and I would love for the whole entire country to be saying, see what Newark did with this money? Learn your community. Understand who your students are. And then if you can get a group of people who are willing to dedicate themselves totally to those young people, then call it whatever you want. It'll work. The face of the city has changed, but St. Vincent's has stayed right here, serving the young women in this community. So however the face of the city changes, I would hope that this school will still be serving the poor, the young women who are in need in this community of this particular kind of educational experience. That's what I hope for.